So, in homework 7, problem 4, we are looking at a ball being dropped from 2 meters, rebounds to 1.5 meters. We're, we're losing some energy. And then we see we have a certain impulse received from the floor. And we're asked F max. So what is the maximum force exerted on the ball? So let's identify that the impulse, J, is equal to the integral The impulse J is the integral of force with respect, sorry, not dx, with respect to time. Really, it's the area under the force time curve. This area is J. But impulse J is also the change in momentum, delta P. And so we can say J equals, well, mass times V final minus mass times V initial and we can factor that M out of both terms and just say V final minus V initial right so our impulse is the change in momentum and so we have our final momentum minus our initial momentum it's our change in momentum so we need to find our initial and final velocities and to do that we're going to apply the conservation of energy we know the ball is dropped from a specific height and that defines it has this initial potential energy it has this initial mgh and that's equal to its initial velocity sorry it's equal to its kinetic energy one half m v initial squared so what's happening is the ball is falling and hitting the ground here it's all potential mgh and here it's all kinetic one half mv squared now it's v initial because we're looking at the start of our impulse initial and final is relative to our collision it doesn't have to do with dropping up or rising back up like whether, whether it's falling down at the beginning or coming back up at the second half, we are looking solely at the sort of initial to final of the collision. And that's what our impulse is defined as. And so our initial, the like, speed we hit the ground at, we hit the ground with VI. We leave the ground and go back up to a new MGH, MGH2. And then we leave with MV final squared. And we can draw the same conclusion, mgh2 this time is 1 half mv final squared. And so we can use our h1 of 2 meters, right? We start with 2 meters of height, and that's all converted into kinetic energy. We have a given kinetic energy. We can find our v. All we're doing is solving for v equals. We can then find our vi. To find our v final, we look at, well, it comes back up to one and a half meters. So our H2 is one and a half meters. We have a given potential energy at the end of that sort of movement. And what we're doing is applying the conservation of energy, not to the very beginning to the very end of the problem, but from one state to the next state, from one state to the next state. Rather than looking from beginning to end, we can go from state to state, we can take steps and say, all of it goes to kinetic. Then we lose some heat, right? From the collision, we lose heat. And then after doing that, it's conserved again. But that collision does not conserve energy. And so that's why we have to break this apart. So we can use this to find our VI and our VF. And once we know what J is, right, it's going to tell us mass, velocity final, velocity initial. It's also the area under a curve. This is a triangle, right? The area of a triangle is 1 half times height, F max, times width of five milliseconds. So we're gonna to wanna to put that in seconds. 
um, because of the sort of calculations you want to do them in standard SI units and for the velocity that's going to be per second All right, we're going to find meters per second and so we want to find sort of seconds in our period or time so 5 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds All right and that is the area or j equals one half f max so we can say j equals and so these two equations are equal mv final minus v initial is equal to one half f max times five times ten to the minus three seconds and so that will let us then find f max our maximum force